and signed an agreement in mid-March with La Liga Club Cadiz. The terms of that agreement will see young players from the Eastern Caribbean country being provided with playing and developmental opportunities in Spain. Cadiz finished pretty much mid-table last season and are 17th in the current La Liga standings. Now, president of the St. Kitts and Nevis Football Association, Atiba Harris, who had signed his first professional football contract 19 years ago with Cadiz, had this to say. He says, I think the dream for many of our players is to go to college or become professional footballers. So to formulate this agreement with Cadiz Football Club, a La Liga, La Liga club, it's a realistic opportunity for our young players to have a realistic, standardized pathway to chase their dreams and become the next professional footballer or the many professional footballers in years to come. Harris joins us now on the Sportsmax Zone to discuss this development in St. Kitts and Nevis uh, football. Uh, Atiba Harris, welcome to the Sportsmax Zone. Let me start by congratulating you on becoming the St. Kitts and Nevis Football Association president. Uh, not often that we see um, people as young as you are rise to the head of the football association in their country. Congrats, man. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for having me on the show. It's a pleasure. And yes, it's a great honor. And it's, it shows that the sky is the limit. And I'll encourage all professional footballers or aspiring players out there who are coming to the end of their careers to take up the challenge and push forward to, to try to enhance football in the region. Okay, so take us back now to your first professional contract with Cadiz. You were very young at the time. Um, and and the, the way that you would have maintained enough contact with them to have such a beneficial signing with them, even so, you know, so many years separated from that, from that uh, signing that you had in 2003. Yes, yeah, so it, it started back when I, finished, when I finished high school as a 17-year-old. I would... Myself and two other players went over to Newcastle, well, Huddersfield United. Then I went on to Newcastle United. Unfortunately, because of the people ranking back then, we, I was unable to obtain a work permit. So given, um, given the recommendation from Sir Bobby Robson, rest in peace, and Mick Wadsworth, who was, the, who was a former coach of Newcastle, they recommended me to Cadiz, and that's how, how I was able to sign in Cadiz. It was a great experience as a youngster, as an 18-year-old, by then, going over there and experiencing the European culture and football. Yeah, so what uh, specifically now can young players in St. Kitts and Nevis expect from this collaboration with uh, Cadiz? So, so this, is now, this will now standardize a pathway for our young players to go over there and experience not just, not just um, a life in the game, but also to hone their skills and given a realistic opportunity to now look forward to because not many opportunities have been given to our players as of late. So, so to, to have that realistic goal and realistic, realistic chance to go into a professional club, a professional environment in Cadiz, in La Liga, because that's uh, enhanced their technical ability which we are so strong and in the Caribbean. You know, we you know we always we always pride ourselves on our technique. So but the, the sky is but the ceiling is not high enough here in the region as yet. So we can only develop to a certain level and we're looking forward to this partnership too. So when we develop our young players to that level, they are able to continue their growth and their development by going over to Europe and to Cadiz. Yeah, definitely a great opportunity for the youngsters. Now, my question to you is the female footballers, that, um, will there be any opportunities for them? Will they have the equal um, opportunities just like the male players? Yes, that was, that was one of my first questions after once speaking to Kike. I have four daughters and they, they, three of them, three of which play soccer or football, as we say. So the opportunity going to be given to the female players as well. So there's the sky's the limit for them. If they want to choose this pathway to become professional footballers, it's, it's there for them to take our grasp. Yeah, and Atiba, I know you're very close to the players. You know, when they found out um, of the news about this partnership, what has been the mood like in the camp? You know, what have they, they been saying? It's been ecstatic. So the, you can see... You can see a different, a different vibes in the in Saint Kitts and Nevis, where where players are now motivated. The national senior men's team actually travelled to Europe 
played a, played a friendly against Andorra, and we we decided we decided to use our local players on this on this specific game so so that they can gain the experience and also be seen as well and i think that was the first look of maybe caddy seeing them in a live match yeah well that that was one method of advertising the players to caddies but is there anything else atiba structurally that you've got in place to ensure that your your players are seen by the caddies officials would they would they come to the country to scout players or will it be them using an opportunity when St. Kitts and Nevis plays internationals, whether at the under-17, under-20, or Olympic or senior level, um, present themselves to see the national players? Yes, yeah, so upon elected, we started a national program where, where we started with the, with the under-17, the U-20s, and also the senior, the senior teams. That's in both male and female. We're going we're gonna to include all the other categories, so they'll, they'll be able to come over to our, to our country, look at players, give us, give us pointers, give us, give us um, advice and, and how we can go about things. We're also working in the future on a methodology, so that way, so that way when the players leave here, leave St. Kitts and Nevis, they go over into a system and be able to adapt um, sooner than sooner, as quick as possible. Yeah, and um, you are in your first year as president of the St. Kitts and Nevis Football Association, Atiba, and uh, you know it really is, from my standpoint, heartwarming to see you know a player who has given so much to the country from a playing standpoint and uh, experiencing so much as a professional football player, being in an administrative role. What do you think, based on your life so far, will best position you to give solid and uh, purposeful um, work to the St. Kitts and Nevis Football Association? So I think over the years I've already I've always had a dream of giving back to my country, giving back to people in general. So so this comes natural for me. I, I came from humble beginnings and I had to fight for, every, for everything that I've achieved in my life. With the help of many other people, and I love giving back to 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 the sport. Hence, why I return. I chose to return. I actually actually cut my my professional career short. I had my I had a guaranteed deal with Oklahoma and the GFC, and we decided to I decided to cut it um, cut it short in order to come home. And many people saw it as a risk, but I saw it as destiny. Because now I'm actually living living a dream and, and serving a purpose and giving back to the youths and giving back to football in St. Kitts and Nevis. Well, having made that dis decision and it described, as you just said, by some people as a risk, how confident were you that you were going to win at, at the polls? Because at the elections of the St. Kitts and Nevis Football Association, you beat Don Grant 15-11 in the polls, which you know would be regarded as a pretty a pretty close poll, how confident are you going back into uh, that setup that you were gonna be the the president? I think everything everything I go into, I go in, I give it a hundred percent. So I was pretty confident. I know I know who I was up against. I know the challenges that that I would have faced. So we can. But my team and I kind of laid out the groundwork pretty early, even during my playing career. And I spent days and nights, a lot of restless nights, a lot of sleepless nights on the phone while I was while I was overseas. And when I came when I came back, I actually came down to St. Kitts without my family, and I hit the ground running. It was it was almost like a 24/7 ship going around to the membership, uh, going around to the membership, giving giving them tips getting feedback and, and trying to put things together. So whatever I do, I give, I give it 100%, just like my playing days. I, I give it 100% going into this campaign, so I was pretty confident that I would, um, I would have came out victorious in this election. Yeah, Atiba, along with Keith Kayamba Gums, I would say that you are the most um, illustrious St. Kitts and Nevis football player in, in the country's history. Um, talk to me quickly about Caribbean players and their current role in football in the USA, because it seems to be, to be one of the closest markets for Caribbean talent. When you were playing in the MLS for 
Chivas USA, FC Dallas, San Jose, Real Salt Lake, and so on. There were so many more Caribbean players who were prominent in in the in the in the MLS. You know, you know, players like Andy Williams and uh, Donovan Ricketts, and you know, there was Shalry Joseph from Grenada. Um, that 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 bunch has has disappeared from the L MLS market. What are your thoughts on that, and what's the reason you think for that? Of course, I have to I have to say, Kayamba was my role model growing up, and still is, and. He was one of the players who really, who really helped push me by seeing his work. So I wanna, I wanna thank him for that, and as well as all the other local players, national team players like Yellowman, etc., and Deco, who is the current national team head coach. Regarding regarding Caribbean players in Major League Soccer, uh, the USA and Canada in general, I think if you notice over the years, the amount of players have decreased, and I think the roles have have really decreased significantly even with those players who remained in in major league soccer i think as a as a youngster going into major league soccer yeah i was fortunate enough to be teammates with andy williams bomber jeff cunningham played against ezra hendrickson from st vincent shall joseph like you said and i think before i got there there was the likes of stern john etc yeah. who was once the leading goal scorer but I think I think Caribbean players have haven't been given a realistic opportunity anymore, and I think the development charity starts at home, and I think the development in the region needs to improve in order for for our players to to get a realistic opportunity, as well as what's hampering our players. We don't have we don't have the privilege of having many head coaches or many Caribbean people in the in the front office who can really push for us. And that's and that's kind of hampering our players' progress and giving them opportunities. So we need to look, we need to look at that part of it, the administrative part of it, because there's a lot that goes on where someone who's going to speak for the Caribbean players when they get to America. We need more people to talk to talk for our players, and we need to really unite and and band together to come up with a solution, because it doesn't it doesn't make sense for us to look at look at them in the north for the opportunities that always we need to develop our players here and develop a system here at home first we need to take care of home because i mean for international transfer i think you have to be 18 18 years or older in order to move unless you have i guess citizenship or something of that country that you're going to well having having said atiba that it's so difficult for caribbean players to get into the front office and to get administrative roles in the MLS at the moment. Tyrone Marshall is a player that you would have probably played against. And because you have traveled so many teams, you may have been even a teammate of Tyrone Marshall. But wasn't he some months ago appointed coach of FC Cincinnati with the, the sacking of, of the head coach? How, how prominent do you think that development was as a Caribbean person, Tyrone Marshall? Yes, it's, it's definitely... It's definitely... A great thing, I think Ezra Hendrickson as well, who, who was appointed head coach of Chicago Fire, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, he was, yeah. And also, I think guys like Rob, uh, what's his name, for Colorado, another Jamaican guy. Oh. Yeah, so, so I think he, he actually, I don't think he, he got capped for Jamaica, though, but he's a Jamaican. So I think the opportunities, the opportunities are there, but yeah, we need more of yeah, was that Robin Fraser? Robin Fraser. Yeah, Robin Fraser. Yeah. Robin Fraser. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we need, but we need more of our our people to gain those in those positions, not just as coaches, mm -hmm. but within the front office itself. So that way, we can speak for our players. Mm. All right, Atiba. I I think you know you've hit up on something really good with Cadiz. I don't think there are many similar opportunities for, for countries with overseas, well, European uh, clubs in, in particular. And we know that La Liga is one of the top leagues in the world. And I certainly hope that in short order, we'll begin to see St. Kitts and Nevis players being attached to Cadiz and trying to develop their talent because uh, St. Kitts and Nevis has uh, always produced very, very talented footballers. And the Caribbean on a whole is known for producing talent. But as you said, there needs to be a vehicle, a pathway to, to lift the standards and to lift the um, opportunities for these players. But Atiba, we'll be in touch. And um, certainly we're happy to, to have spoken to you here on the Sportsmax Zone.
Thank you. Pleasure being on the show. Looking forward to having more more of these conversations and looking forward to the Caribbean really uniting, putting our heads together so that way we can formulate a development pathway to, to push our players, coaches, etc. as we go continue to go. Yeah, thank you very much. Atiwa Harris there, still not 40 years old, and he's president of the St. Kitts and Nevis Football Association. We go to break. Still a lot more to come on the Sportsmax Zone. Want more content? Follow us on YouTube, subscribe to Sportsmax on cable, and download the Sportsmax app today.